listening to Themes and Memes, a different kind of movie review. I am your host, Aaron Franz, and here with me is my co-host, Adam Roscoe. How are you doing, Adam? Yeah, not so bad, Aaron. Um, good to be back. Um, we're just going to squeeze in our second review of the month before our RSS yeah, yeah, bandwidth yeah. takes over. <laughs> so we're, getting, we're kind of cramming this one, in, <laughs> technically speaking, but you know, it's, it's okay, and it should be, should be yeah. a little bit fun. Well, it's it's an internet film, a film that was released online, so it's uh, keeping it quick ought to be ought to be easy. We'll hmm. see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think I mentioned this briefly at the end of our last review uh, that we would be covering um, Creative Control. So that is mm-hmm. a indie film um, directed mm-hmm. by a guy called uh, was it Benjamin Dickinson? That's his name, isn't it? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That's his name. And um, yeah, so he's a um, He's a guy who works in, in New York as a um, he does like he's done some films, but I think mainly he started out doing advertisements for big corporations and also some music videos mm-hmm. for a few different people. Um, Interesting. So okay, he's got okay. that background, and the film yeah is kind of set in that world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what I was thinking when you said that. I'm like, man, the characters in this film live in that world. When you talk about like making. Uh, advertisements and making music videos that's what the main characters are doing because they're in marketing and you get the other character photographer and people that work in that yeah it's so so definitely this is autobiographical in in a sense for Mm. for the director here he's definitely drawing from real life and putting it in there and i i love this film i think i think it's really good and they did a great job with it yeah um he did he did say that. I mean, I've been, I read a few interviews um, with this guy Benjamin Dickinson, and um, he did uh, he did say that being a um, a director, um, you know, of of things like advertising and music videos in New York City did influence. Um, well, it was I, I guess kind of the inspiration for all this film. So you're right in saying it is yeah. kind of autobiographical because he does talk about the fact that this film is based very much on some of his experiences and his observations living in that world. Um, yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, t- I totally get that. I totally get that. That kind of, they came, that came across big time for me when I watched it. I think that was part of what I liked so much because I've had uh, <laughs> I've had uh, only um, slight uh, dip my toes in that world. So, so I know of it. I've been in it for a few seconds at a time, but I'd, I haven't lived it very much. But yeah. I'm certainly well aware of it. You know what I mean? Well, I think I think that's what makes it so relatable is that is that a lot of us have had experiences. Um, moving in those circles, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I'm much the same. I've, I've, I've kind of dipped my toes in it. I mean, I, um, mm-hmm. I worked for a, um, for a, um, a media production company in London doing like, um, doing trailers and, um, mm-hmm. film posters mm-hmm. for, for big films and stuff like that. And it was, it was, yeah, it was exactly <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, the like lifestyle. This. Yeah. It's like, it's like this yeah. film. It's exactly like this uh-huh. film. Um, uh-huh. all, all, everybody's a hipster. It's all about yeah, parties yeah, yeah. and scenes and clubs and who knows who and and yeah, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Well, you got you got a network. Yeah, you got a network. It's, it's, yeah. And, and the, that's true, actually. If you want to like get in this world, you have to do the networking thing. And let's not let's, let's not nitpick the uh, <laughs> the the ins and outs of trying to exist in the entertainment industry. Let's, We'll just move on with the review, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as much um, as I'd love to do j- that. Just on that note, before we do though, I mean, it is kind of funny. We'll, we'll put up some, um, we'll put up some, some links in the in the show notes for, for this for this film. You know, the interviews I was talking about because he does talk about his own um, moral quandaries and reservations about working in the advertising industry in some of these interviews. Yeah. And it is kind of interesting yeah. because he's he's very um, honest about the fact that he is living in a world of, and working in a world that, of hypocrisy, basically, and, uh, yeah. you know, a world where like money is the bottom line and, and nothing else matters. Um, but he's also very, uh, I guess, pragmatic about it and saying that, well, you know, I have to make a, I've got to make a living and, you know, I'm, that's kind of the bottom line. So that kind of ends up being the main struggle for the main character, David here in mm. this movie is that he, he, he has to be pragmatic, and in doing so, out of survival, he has to make all these compromises that he really, in the depths of him, he wishes he didn't have to make, but he, he, he knows he does, and so he compromises that, and then so many other things get compromised as a, as a adult. Well, again, autobiography, because um, the character David is actually Benjamin Dickinson. He plays himself, so 
that is him. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. probably well, should have mentioned that before, but yeah. So yeah, well, there you go. That makes perfect sense. It yeah. does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, we we'll probably, we can talk about the conclusion of the film, which is very very interesting um, later on. But yeah, that fits absolutely in with with what he was talking about. You know, his own kind of struggle and the own his own reservations and kind of ideological conflicts, I suppose. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, the more we talk about this, the more I like this film. I liked it a lot to begin with, but uh, well, where should we start in explaining? Well, I think uh, explaining this film. Basically, so 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 what it is, what the film is about is it's about a this character of um, of David, you know, living in New York City, and he's working for an advertising agency. Um, and the advertising agency just got a big contract for a new product called Augmenta, which is basically Google yeah. Glasses. So if people have been, yeah. you know, people are familiar with that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the augmented reality scenario where you've got, um, you know, you wear a pair of glasses and you've got a, um, you've got a whole bunch of like avatars and objects and, um, you know, programming in front of your eyes, you know, so it's kind of like, yeah. You know, augmented I mean, reality, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if that's the best way of describing it to someone who doesn't know what it is, but yeah, it's yeah, <clears throat> it's 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 basically if you take all the gadgets and gadgets on your cell phone, if you could overlay that over your actual vision somehow, and hmm. instead of looking at a phone to do it, you're just looking on the world, and there's displays that pop up in your actual vision. That's what augmented reality is, yeah. and what this technology is. Yeah. Well, um, heads up display would be another way of describing it. So it's like a, it's everything that's yep. on your iPhone. And then some more, and a heads up display. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that yeah. So that's it. So he's he's HUD. working. <laughs> what? <Sorry. laughs> H U D heads up display. Oh, HUD. heads up. The, oh, right. Okay. Not that's... to be confused with chud. Okay, I was a bit slow on that one. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so, the um, so so yeah. So he's he's working for this advertising agency, and they get a contract for marketing this this prog. You know this um product augmenter you know and um mm -hmm. and so as part of this he gets given a, a, a you know a prototype to test out and to use so that he can come up with better you know press for the for the thing and um mm -hmm. yeah so it, it just follows him getting involved with this technology and and the the, 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 the i guess the the guts of the plot really revolves around um his crush on a co-worker and this co-worker yes. is a girl called sophie who is sophie, in a relationship. Yeah. he's she's in a relationship with wim the photographer right Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Wim, so which is his friend his yeah his best friend i think and and so sophie is like kind of a uh acquaintance style friend and wim is yeah his best buddy yeah yeah so so, wim, so they're all friends and you, you know yeah so 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 wim is his kind of his best buddy and his girlfriend yep. sophie is like just a, a very casual acquaintance in the workplace who he has a secret crush on and so the mm -hmm. film kind of just follows um, it's, well, it, yeah, it, it, it starts out with, with kind of establishing this crush and, and looking at him trying to make these um, little passes at her and trying to get closer to her. And then he eventually realizes yeah. that um, this augmented uh, reality technology can help him simulate <laughs> yeah. some kind yeah. of a sexual experience with her, you know? Yeah. And, and, oh, and the whole time, David has a girlfriend, Juliet. Yeah. Which he feels, he feels, uh, you know, so, so whenever he's fantasizing about Sophie, he's, um, oh, what's that? I can't think of the, the word for her now, but, but he's like, yeah, I can't do this, but I am, you know, I'm being bad. And, and the whole time that that's going on, he's kind of living vicari vicariously through his friend, Wim. Wim is constantly sending him these sexts which he gets from sophie and other women because he's living a very promiscuous lifestyle he gets these uh he like resends them to david so that's a really weird dynamic and I, I, you could talk forever and ever about yeah. that but th that's something that people actually do now and i yeah. find that amazing but i know that people do this and it's like I don't even know where to begin talking well, about you know, that, what is, that? <clears throat> what is yeah. it really other than like the um the voyeuristic culture that is facilitated by social media and by, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. you know, all this kind of communications technology, which is, you know, again, you know, we've covered this so many times, but it's, it's, you know, breaking down the boundaries in, of, of, in terms of social norms, like what's private and what's personal yeah. and what's to be kept, you know, to yourself and all those kind of norms and boundaries being eroded away. And so that's kind of a, just a, an epitomization, I suppose, of that. Cause I've seen it too. Yeah. You know, I know what you're talking yeah. about. I don't, I'm not close to anyone who does that kind of stuff. But, yeah, you know, no, I, no. If people I were have... doing that uh, to me, I'd be like, get out of here. Man. Yeah. Don't send me that. I know. But, um, but you know, it's, you know, 
acquaintances or fr- uh, family, I suppose, younger family members, that kind of thing. You hear about it, you see it, you read about oh, it in the yeah. news, you know. So, so this is this is one of the aspects of this movie that I love so much is that it's commentary on present day. Obviously, it's mm. it's all these all these things are happening present day. The technology is just a made up technology, kind of a technology that's not really hit the market so much, but everybody knows that it's about to. So it's just kind of projecting what's going on now and saying, oh, what if we just went a little step further? What are some of the couple other things that might happen? But definitely, what's going on now? Yeah, well, <clears throat> they really nail it. The technology is, uh, you know, as we discussed, is very much um, doing, it's being developed. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure what the current like market status of the Google Glasses is in terms of whether they're actually being sold to the end user on a mass scale. Yeah, I, th- I think I think it became a flop more or less. Well, it I'm seemed to be because sure. it was such yeah. there was such a massive hype when it first came out, and then it just didn't really go anywhere. And it's it's kind of interesting because again, in one of these interviews I was looking at. Um, this, this director states that he feels that um, the the whole concept of things, something like augmented reality, is not a guarantee. You know that it may well be rejected by society. It may well be a flop. Um, it may yeah, well be seen yeah. as more of a gimmick than anything useful and not worth the money. And you know you have to wonder whether that's the case with something like Google Glasses. Yeah, it's interesting. But but this this video or this movie takes the premise like well what if Google Glass was successful yeah. like this this is probably what would it would have happened right <laughs> well, well yeah this is it this is it's all about what um what, what, what it's a, it's a, the, the film is very much social satire and I guess a, I suppose cautionary tale um about yeah, yeah what, definitely what 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 um yeah what might happen or what would happen if this you know, this technology became readily available to, to a lot of people. Um, and I think through the, you know, the, the plot devices and the movements in this film, we, we, I think we get a pretty realistic and plausible, um, you know, presentation of, of the types of social consequences that would come about from this type of technology, because I guess we see, I mean, to start off with, I mean, and this, again, the film revolves around this, is this, um, this kind of crush um, between, you know, this, the character David and, and Sophie, where he's in a relationship. So he's got a stable relationship with a girlfriend that, you know, seems to adore him, as far as we can see. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And she, she's a bit flaky, but, <laughs> you know, she seems yeah. committed. And um, he has basically no interest in her. He doesn't want to talk to her. He doesn't want to spend any time with her, really. He finds her, seems yeah. to find her annoying. And he's constantly got his eye on kind of the, the next best thing. You know, he's, yeah. he's he's wanting a thrill. He's wanting an upgrade. He's wanting something better. He's wanting something more exciting. And, of course, the technology allows him to, I guess, experience that vicariously. It kind of gives him that in a way. It fulfills yeah. that kind of unquenched appetite, which would not yeah. be necess- might not necessarily be quenched otherwise. Yeah, I think the Juliet character is really good. I love the way th- there's so much uh, being worked out through the Juliet character for her own uh, self and through David, too, with their relationship. And for all her flakiness, she's actually very much in control, too. Mm. And it's it's shown she's a bit naive, flaky, that sort of thing. She's uh, you know sort of young at heart. But at the same time, she's a yoga instructor, and she's actually very good at yoga. Yeah. And the the way they use yoga in this, I think, is very uh, very well done too. It, she mentions one of the first lines Juliet has. She says that uh, there's a million different things vying for your attention now oh, more yeah, than ever. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, there's a million different things vying for your attention. And she's talking about the augmented reality, the mm. technology, all that, all the problems that come with that and all the problems that we see throughout the film. She says, hey, look, there's a million different distractions. What we want to do with yoga is focus on what we're actually doing in the moment and not it's, – it's funny because this technology is the epitome – of distraction, what will make you, yeah, of <laughs> yeah. distraction. What will make make you fail in that yogic task of trying to just understand what you're doing, understanding, you know, being in control of your body, knowing, being aware of where it is, what's doing. So I, I think it was really well done how they use that, and I mean, yeah. we'll talk more about well, that here in a second. That's um, because... yeah, that was that's that, that's um very well observed that, and I I remember I think it was in that same piece of dialogue that you just referenced there that she said. I think she, I think yeah, I think she sort of followed on from that statement and said, "The absolute last thing that the world needs right now is to is is to be able to check your emails and your sunglasses." You know, <laughs> and I just thought yeah, that was yeah. so on point. You know, I mean, I couldn't agree yeah, with that more. Yeah. And you know, it fits right in with the 
the the juxtaposition of present moment awareness as you know achieved mm-hmm. through yoga and other kind of um, mm-hmm. you know mystical practices and oh, the, yeah. the the world of, of endless distraction and endless um, escapism and vice you know which is facilitated through technology so yeah that's that's very interesting that you brought that up because I, I do remember that that bit of dialogue and it, it kind of hit home for me as well yeah this i love how the film shows these kind of two worlds going on there's and in, in many different facets there's the two worlds of david like him in the the good relationship that he should be having with juliet and mm-hmm. then his guilty pleasure of fantasizing about his friend sophie and all that and there's also the real world which is natural and you know you got juliet going out to to the upstate new york to do yoga out in, in nature you know and all mm. that and then you've got the city with all of its artifice and uh within that say you know they're going to the clubs at night and everybody's sexting each other and taking place in debauchery so you've got the the real and the artificial juxtaposed all over the place and for david it's all all about the choice of well you're choosing the artificial over the real but you when you know you really had ought not to do that Mm, yeah it is it's it's a choice um because he's constantly reminded of something more real in his relationship with julia you know um Mm -hmm. because she, she is quite often talking about um you know these concepts and um i mean there's there's even other bits in the film where for example she um what is it? I think she's she's late for work or something like that, and she goes into the yoga mm-hmm. place, and, and they basically tell her that you know she that, that's it, you know, like you can't keep on doing this. And I think there's some argument, and she decides to, you know, like leave. She quits or something, and then she goes on the yeah. internet <laughs> and starts looking up at all this like corporate. <laughs> like corruption and conspiracies and all this type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's kind of framed in such a way, like I remember, the, the, I remember like um, the character David's response to all this is just like, oh, well, you failed in your career. So you're just looking for justification for that. You're looking for, um, you're looking yeah. to, you know, externalize it and make yourself the victim, um, which is mm-hmm. kind of true in that context. But, you know, again, it's, yeah. it's another reminder of, you know, the, uh, yeah, again, the two worlds where he's, you know, completely lost in, in artifice and in unreality yeah. and she's really yeah. trying to strive towards something she, a bit more real she's trying to pull pull him out of that like mm. hey look like what are you doing here but she has her struggles with staying in control as well so mm. uh, you know she kind of just tries out of spite to, to, to you know like be with another man just to, yeah. to make him angry and you know that's uh, they do so well in this film with just like relationship dynamics yeah. and all that kind yeah. of stuff that, you know I mean, like they just use so many, uh, so many of those to good effect. Uh, yeah, the, I feel like I think those were the some of the elements that stood out to me the most in the film were the um, these very accurate and um, yeah, these almost kind of visceral um, relationship domina- dynamics that we can so mm-hmm. often relate to and which serve the film so well. And that it's, I think that was, I think probably the, the the best example of that, or one of the best examples, is when um, the David character. I think they have an argument, him and Juliet, and he goes off to to a party and he tries to sex the the Sophie girl to try and get her to meet to meet him at a hotel. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. He tries he tries to coax her out to a hotel. Yeah, yeah. yeah sort of these suggestive uh-huh. text messages and blah blah blah, and, and um, uh-huh. so yeah, so, so so she she is they have an argument. He 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 leaves, um, and his girlfriend Juliet is, is you know upset at home and. She doesn't hear from him for a few days, so she decides to go and try and, I don't know, um, get some emotional stability or some kind of, um, what's the word? Um, what's the right word here? Yeah, she, she, she's, she's, it's kind of like a, a, a vengeful thing where she's, she wants to go and have sex with somebody else and be unfaithful to him as a means of making yeah, herself feel better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's trying to spite him. Like, oh, yeah. I'll get back to, at him by having sex with somebody else and... You know, she, she's trying to feel better herself, but obviously it's not going to well, do that. I think it's the, yeah, it's, it's, so it's, it's the spike, but it's also the trying to fill that emotional gap. Like, I feel so rejected right now that I need someone to love me in some fashion, you know? Yeah, yeah, that, that as of, well. That as well, yeah. yeah. Um, so she goes to um, she, she, the, the, the one of the other yoga instructors um, at her work is basically some kind of, you know, like serial womanizer. Um, yeah. What does yeah, he call yeah. himself? Well, she's been complaining. She'd been complaining, She'd been complaining about, about him previously. About, yeah, she was, she was complaining about him because he was he was just you know going holding these yoga classes with all these attractive young women coming in and just basically heading on all of them. Um, and what yeah. he had some 
he was a very creepy character, I have to say. And he had some Indian name, which meant serpent of love or something like that. Yeah, it was yeah, really creepy. Yeah. It was really creepy. But it's it's funny because, <laughs> you know, they, they have that scene where you know, she invites him over to have sex. And, and you know, she's trying to rush through it um, because she doesn't mm. really want to do it. You know, she's you can tell that this is just some desperate last ditch attempt to, you know, again, to spite and to, to make herself feel better. But it's, you know, yeah. she's... It's, there's I nothing thought, to it. There's nothing to it. You know, she's she's totally rushing. I just thought that was really well observed in, in terms of the relationship dynamics. Yeah, yeah. You know what I like about this film is the title. I think is genius because it's really uh, they're saying a lot with the title, the creative control. Mm. Uh, I mean, it, in one sense, it's the obvious thing of you give an artist creative control, and there's an artist character that's supposed to uh, make a commercial for this product in the movie and has full creative control. That's yeah. the obvious exoteric. But esoterically, you're talking about creation, and creation, sexuality, human sexuality is creation, right? Mm -hmm. so, so this is all about the control of one's own creative powers, right? Yeah. Uh, so what are we talking about? We're talking about self control of uh your genitals mainly yeah. you know yeah. what i mean and 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 the lack of self-control that we see in so many characters they're totally out of control yeah and this again if you tie it back to yoga and the occult and occult practices so much of uh, of the occult is about having absolute control over yourself you know having awareness being present mm. in the moment but very much being in control of your sexual energies and things like that so i yeah. definitely think that's what they're doing here in this film I hadn't thought about that particular interpretation of the title, but that's, I, you know, I think you're probably right there. I think there's something to that because I know that the director, um, you know, the character of David is actually um, a, a avid yoga practitioner himself. Um, oh. And he, talk, he has, you know, talks a lot about, um, you know, being in control, having, you know, present mm -hmm. moment awareness and, you know, the, the, the power of, of intention, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that is very interesting because it is, as you say, it's all about um, control and mastery over your appetites, over your um, your animal instincts, I, I suppose. Yeah, and, um, and then the technology augmenta is this vehicle that just amplifies the debauchery and it makes it so easy, like, for to fall into bad behaviors, bad habits, and just distraction, mere distraction, yeah. which deflects you from, you know, your occult mastering of yourself. Well, now it's a uh, hundred times worse because you're wearing the Google Glass technology, and it's just instantaneous. Like you even think about it for a second, it's like you gratify that uh, that urge instantaneously. So you, you can fall into a deep, deep, dark hole, and you know that, that's what you're seeing in these characters at night, living the nightlife. They're in that dark hole that's being assisted by the technology. Yeah, it's very, very much a hole. Very much a place of desperately trying to satiate each and each and every one of their appetites and their their mm -hmm. base kind of instincts you know um it's mm -hmm. like you know there's no um what well, what we see with these characters you know like um the especially the david character where he's in a relationship which with you know with an attractive girl who seems to be intelligent and committed and all that and he has no interest in that because he is simply thinking about his base sexual instinct yeah. and his, his, his yeah. sexual attraction towards another woman you know and he's he's mm -hmm. willing to to go out on a limb and to risk everything just to, you know, just, just to have that, um, desire quenched. And, um, there's also an element of guilt feeling good too. Oh, there, there's, there's a reality in that and that you do guilty things, things that make you feel guilty, but it feels good to do it. Mm. And it's linked to, uh, addiction. You, you can get yeah. addicted to that, like feeling of like, Oh, I got away with it or I'm trying to get yeah. away with this. Well, it's a or, or yeah. I might, yeah, it's a thrill. So, so you know, it's, it, pumps up your adrenaline when you do that kind of thing yeah and you, you, that's a you, base thing too you absolutely see that and this um this i suppose this affair between david and sophie where um it, there's a, they're constantly having to hide their um exploits from you know their respective partners where it's <laughs> there's all this kind of sex thing going on and they're kind of having these awkward <laughs> sort of conversations in the workplace and meeting up here and chatting there but it's, it's all it's all hidden but you can see that the both yeah. characters and it's her especially this Sophie character, they're, they're getting a real thrill out of doing this because it's like we could get caught at any time, you know. And 
yeah there's yeah. that whole thing going on so yeah it's the same thing as you know the married couple has an affair and there's mm. all i mean we see this in in real life constantly everybody everybody knows of this eh? if, if you're an adult you're you're aware of the yeah. reality of this and it's they they do such a good job in this and they use so many little devices like the commercial they're working on for the drug this uh pharmaceutical Fal- Falinex Falinex. Or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and it's spelled p h a yeah p h a l l like phallus yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, and and you get you, know, you got the big phallic plane, plane yeah, in the yeah. commercial also and, and they say uh what do they say they say something about something oh panic attacks made me lose control mm. but Falinex put me back in the pilot seat yeah. So even that, that commercial they're working on is referencing losing this main control. theme yeah. of the movie is, hey, yeah, I'm losing control. I'm out of, uh, I'm losing my creative control over, you know, what's my creative control? Uh, my phallic, you know? Yeah, I mean? yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. they're, they're using, they're saying that, that they're, yeah. they're using some good symbolism. There. Yeah, that's definitely some very well observed symbolism, actually. I didn't think about it in quite a, the, that, that amount of detail, but that's, yeah, very much so. And um, again, uh, the other side of that is it's, um, you know, especially from the point of view of the director, is, is, is that this is more um, satire and commentary about the world of advertising. Um, yeah, and marketing oh, yeah. because you know we, we, we so they they present the um the problem of panic attacks of mental instability of feeling lost you know feeling depressed or, or what have you and of course the advertising um industry just going into full gear trying to give you a pill for it you know yeah, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know don't don't yeah. don't examine your life or anything like that just um just take phalanx you know so that's that's i guess the exoteric interpretation of it but still you know, it's kind of a, it's, it's yeah relevant. yeah everything about that i love because the uh the, sh- the just the the actual shooting of the commercial and again the poking fun at the, the industry of making the commercials and all that is just they they did so good with just that and, and people can appreciate that but then you get the deep symbolism in there too that uh, everything's working so yeah. I, I really enjoy it yeah it's interesting um i guess i mean i suppose we've we've talked a little bit about the um the sexual current of the film, you know, and the, mm-hmm. the, the concepts to do with, um, to do with sexuality and relationships. And I think, I think one of the other interesting, um, elements, um, and probably, you know, one of the most important is, is to do with what you talked about before and distractions, um, and how mm-hmm. so much of this technology, I mean, if, if we look around today with, with iPhones and iPads and Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff, it's all, it's, it's, you know, I mean, people are living mm-hmm. in, a, in, a, in a sea of, of completely superfluous extraneous distractions. And um, mm-hmm. I, I really felt that that whole concept and that whole critique was exemplified in the, um, there's a particular scene where David is, he's, he's working, he's sitting in his office somewhere and um, he's, he's got a whole bunch of stuff to do. Like he's got a whole afternoon's worth of different tasks to complete. And um, <laughs> he puts on his, his augmented glasses to, to get things done. And you see him sort of like open up one folder of files or something, and then that plays a, a video. And then he, the video, while the video is playing, he goes on to open up an email. Yeah. And then multitasking. The, well, <laughs> it's not just multitasking. It's, I mean, it's, it's well, it is, but it's it's more than that because he's doing about twenty different yeah. things. And it, what what happens yes. is whenever yes. he starts up something, it just he starts up another thing. And while that's running, he starts mm-hmm. up another thing. So he's got like a yeah. song, a video, a, 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 um, a, like a, a Skype chat. Um, yeah. emails um, and and texts as well constantly all going yeah you know at the same time and I mean if yeah. that doesn't remind you of, of where we're at right now and at least or at least where we're going to be very very shortly I don't know what will so. yeah yeah and, and and these technologies that Augmenta is uh, riffing on it definitely they enable that they they that's a sort of world that, that they that they work with. Is, is that this uh, again? You can give it away. You try to uh, rationalize it and say it's multitasking, but what it is is just feeding into any given distraction that pops up any given second and pretending as though you can do all those things at once. Yeah. Where if you actually sit down and focus on a task, task you get a better. Yeah. Uh, you do it far better, and there have been studies on that too. Oh, right? look! I mean, but it's common sense. I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't think we need scientific studies to prove that. I mean, but I yeah. do. I like. I, I, I get what you're saying. It's just. Um, <laughs> th- but this is it. I mean, this is. I'm bad enough at this myself. 
You know, I have yeah, yeah. enough trouble myself just trying to focus on one thing and not getting baited into clicking on a million different videos on the yeah. internet or links or, yeah. or, or mm-hmm. other things. I'm like, you know what I mean? It's and but I mean, when I look at um, when I look at the younger generation, when I look at people who are in maybe like early twenties, late teens, that kind of area, mm-hmm. and even mm-hmm. people who are in their mid twenties now, um, mm-hmm. they uh, like uh, they seem unable to focus completely. I mean, they yeah. don't do anything productive or constructive on the computers whatsoever you know if it's it's all about having a video game running in one window having a skype conversation running in another um having um you know some other like some music you know going at the same yeah. time you know it's it's that's pretty well, much standard <laughs> you know the, the whole issue is that as humans we're just prone to distraction and, and trying to focus and actually being able to do that takes incredible discipline and thus, you know, the yoga and all that being a tool to try to be able to do that, to actually have the discipline to be able to focus on simple, simple things. But we've lived in a world with this technology that just, uh, it engenders all this distraction just um, as a matter of course, it's just what it is. Mm-hmm. And people have been living within within that for so long and kids have been grown grown up in that, that it's, it's hard to it's hard it's hard to find any way out you know i mean forget about yoga just uh putting down the computer and being able to think about one certain thing that's very difficult to do now you know what i mean so it it amplifies the whole human problem you could i mean this is the problem of being a human being it's amplified by technology actually i I know it man i know it and um i mean it's I mean, I, I would say this is probably more so with, with younger generations, but, it, you know, you could apply this to anybody who of any age who's using, like, um, you know, um, iPhones and iPads and social media on a regular yeah. basis. But it, it's, um, <clears throat> I mean, what we're really talking about here is, is, like, is kind of what we were talking about before in, in terms of what this what is this technology doing other than taking you out of your own reality. It's taking you out of mm-hmm. right here, mm-hmm. right now, What's real? What's important? What am I? Fo- mm-hmm. What am I focused on? Where's my intention? What am I going to do about my life? About changing my circumstances? About mm-hmm. doing things I want to do? Um, achieving my goals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It takes you away from that and into this kind of ethereal, you know, virtual world that doesn't actually exist yeah. in real t- terms. You know, the, the world of ideas and opinions, which is all very well and good in terms of a, a utility yeah. for a utility yeah. sake. But you know, when it becomes when people when people start to exist more in that world, when their consciousness yeah. has sort of moved into that world full time, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and that's, that's what we're seeing now. So. Yeah. And by definition, it's augmented reality. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, well, so reality has been augmented. So what is reality at this point? Yeah. You know? Well, augment, augmented usually has positive connotations, I would say, but um, <laughs> so maybe Not there's another this, word we can come up with. Not, well, it, it's, it's been, you know, it's been altered. It's been augmented. Reality itself has changed. Mm. So it's just showing, yeah, our reality is different now because everything's, uh, this digital layer has been overlaid over top of things. Yeah. I'd probably call it like and, uh, undermined and, reality or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this kind of feels like that sometimes. Yeah, well, it's definitely changed. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, look, look. I mean, I yeah, I, I get. It. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of something, some kind of funny alternative, but I can't come up with one. Because, <laughs> but you know, that's it is. It's, it's, you know, it's taking your, your, your five senses reality in terms of you know where you are in space and time, what you see, what you mm-hmm. hear, um, with your own, you know, eyes and and what you feel, and and then just overlaying something else on top of all of that to the point yeah. where the overlay is now more pronounced and, and is more, I suppose, the primacy of the human experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's taking you out of your body and taking you out of your body. Too. And, that's, well, and, and this, this takes it back to the yoga. The yoga, the yoga yeah. is supposed to be getting you completely in tune with your body and what it's doing. And You're not I, at all here in, in this reality. And when I talk, and I, I guess that's really where I was going with, with when I was talking about, um, just the yeah, the, the drawing you into the world of unreality, of artifice, of something theoretical, conceptual, ethereal out there somewhere is that it, mm-hmm. it, it is drawing you out of your body. And whenever you're being drawn mm-hmm. out of your body, you, you're not in control anymore. You know, you're you're, yeah. at, you're at the mercy of, you know, a myriad of external forces. So yeah, but it's funny how when when you're out of control, I mean, it doesn't mean your body ceases to exist; it's still there. So what is it doing? It's, it's on falling instinct. prey. Yeah, yeah, it's falling prey to to you, to to your lack of control, your lack yeah. of creative control, and yeah. all that. Yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> so yeah, so the film is is, is very much um, you know a, a, a very much cautionary tale. I felt, and you would agree with this. Um, mm-hmm, I, I, mm-hmm. I felt um, you know upon first watching, I, I did feel it was kind of um, very dark and nihilistic. I mean, deliberately so, as the director has you know talked about, and as we have, you know discussed, mm-hmm. it's absolutely meant to be dark and nihilistic because it's a it's a, it's a it's kind of a, a scary kind of satire and all of that. But yeah, yeah. at the same time, you know. Um, very well observed, very well observed yeah. about someone who lives in that world. And I think the portrayal of the kind of urbanite hipster lifestyle where it's all like um, press releases and art openings and, and cocaine uh-huh. and champagne and, you know, <laughs> and sex. And, and sexting each other. Sexting, you know, I mean, that's, that, that is very much something which, um, well, let me put it this way. The, if, 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 if there was one demographic that would absolutely um, buy into something like Augmenta, it would be that. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they'd be right on board. They wouldn't even yeah. think of no why way. you would question it. Like, why would oh, you question? It? Great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's, it's, about that. it's kind of made for hipsters in a way. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, they're they're always the first on whatever. Well, they got to be the first to every site. Is yeah, yeah. It's like oh, this new social media site is out. I'm well, going to use it. Well, that's <laughs> what hipster, I mean, that's the definition of of hipster culture. Really, is to be the first to pick up any kind of trend. You know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or to to make some kind of a new trend, but more just picking them up. So yeah, that would be the first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's funny because it's it's uh, in one sense with the weird sort of fashion side. It's like whoever picks up on the weirdest fashion sort of things. But then on the other side of the coin, if you're talking about technology, it's whoever's the first to just use the new social media app. Like I, I'm saying, and that's that's completely the opposite of you know like weird and origin original. It's the system. I mean that that is the system. Who's the first to plug themselves into, I know. into this, this new this aspect is, of it? You know? This is why I always, um, you know, I mean, I probably could define myself, you know, say ten, ten years ago, maybe as kind of a hipster, and and sure. I, I, can, I can kind of look back and I can see very much that that's what it was all about, and that's this is why it makes me um, it makes me laugh so much now when I see hipsters. It's like mm-hmm. you're taking pride in the fact that you're just literally buying into any fashion that comes, you know, your way. Yeah. Any, anything that's yeah. presented as being fashionable or that will be fashionable that's a little bit ironic or a little bit, yeah. you know, like kind of yeah. uh, obscure. And it's it's just total devotion, you know, to, to mm-hmm. trends. And mm-hmm. I, always, I find that laughable. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I, one other thing which is kind of interesting is that they cast Gavin McInnes in this film. So, um, I mean, I'm not sure if people are familiar with him, but he, was, he used to be like a, a major kind of hipster pundit and he kind of still is to a degree although he kind of has gone a little bit more conservative kind of right wing but um mm. yeah he's he's a big internet personality um interesting i think okay. he was um involved in vice magazine or something oh he's which one is, of those guys yeah all right. interesting. kind of it's funny because they're kind yeah. of very left wing but I, I don't know how all that stuff works i just i just know his face and his name but so they, they've cast him intentionally though because he is he's a self-described hipster that's for sure oh, yeah yeah yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah i mean um did you have anything else that you wanted to say about this? I think that's film? about it. I mean, that you could talk about it being released on Amazon. This movie was released oh, on Amazon. I find that yeah. interesting. But yeah, internet um, film then, right? Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah Amazon and um, this. I'm pretty sure. How, what is it, like Amazon, Netflix, and is it some other company? So we're, we're I saying. Think, I think wasn't exclusively Amazon. I oh, think exclusively oh, I'm just Amazon. talking in general about. I mean, yeah, this film was exclusive with Amazon. Oh, I'm just talking okay. like yeah, yeah, yeah. this whole trend, trend of uh-huh. yeah, like this this trend of of these um these big corporations that are dealing in online stores now becoming their own studios. Um, that's kind yeah, of they're interesting. Becoming big producers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm I'm kind of behind the curve on that stuff, so I just know that they're doing it. I just find it kind of interesting. Oh, it's 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 really yeah, it's really uh, getting big now. So yeah, well, some of the biggest TV shows are like Netflix originals, apparently. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. So, I mean, there's the future of the entertainment industry sort of coming out uh, in present day. We're, we're seeing it happen. So, definitely, th- there's a lot to speak of there, but um, I don't yeah. know. I guess that's a can well, of worms. I don't know if I want to open up, actually. I, just, I guess we could finish off things then. Um, I just wanted to add that I felt that the ending of this film was very interesting because what happens is that, um, and I'll just describe this as quickly as possible. Um, the so so the um the character of david um i think he consummates his affair thing with the, with the um uh sophie character it's, it's, 
Yeah, well, it's it's with the virtual version of it, right? It's with the virtual version, but I'm pretty sure they actually meet up and have real world sex at some point. Um, I could be wrong. It's, it's, I saw the film a few weeks ago, but anyway, regardless of what happens there, he, um, you know, his girlfriend Juliet's had her little affair with the yoga instructor, and um, mm-hmm. hold on, dogs, shut up, dog. Um, <laughs> she, she's she's had a little um affair with the yoga instructor and they've not seen each other for a few days and so he walks back in and they kind of have this kind of um you know they've got a very serious chat about what's happened and she admits to him that she's been um you know unfaithful and but she says to him that she had some kind of amazing amazing transcendent experience when she was having sex with this yoga instructor and she that's right yeah yeah so she explains to him that um you know, we're, we're basically locked into a cycle of self-destruction and of being um, narcissistic and trying to control each other and looking for substitutes to fill the emotional gaps, which we should be, you know, filling ourselves. And th- this this whole big analysis of where the relationship's gone wrong. And she says to him, well, you know, what I want to do is actually, you know, forget about, you know, all this crap in New York and just move up to upstate New York and live on a farm somewhere. And um, he's kind of, he seems to be... Um, he seems to be into, into it. it. He's into it. Yeah, yeah, he's into it. And um, then he gets a call um, from the his, his, his advertising agency saying that because yeah, um, they they basically canned him at first. They're like, okay, you're well, here. it was but terrible. They changed <laughs> their mind. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the 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 guy that he hired to come up with the promo was just he did such a terrible job that they canned him. I think they lost the contract. But then you know, yeah, they called him back on the phone, and just as he's about to make this big life changing decision to like step away from the artifice, get back to what's real in terms of his relationship, in terms of real living, you know, outside of the city somewhere. The artificial world pulls him back in. It pulls him back in. And that's where the film yeah. ends. And I thought that was, that was really interesting. Yeah. So even when you're thinking, it's like, okay, okay yeah, you're right. I've had it with this. This is no good for me. You can't get out. It's like, well, well <laughs> I, I can't go now. You know, I'm invested in this. Yeah, yeah. And th- yeah, that's such a good observation because that's the way this whole thing works. Like, yep. No matter how much you hate all of it, it's like, how, how do you get away from it? Y- yeah. Even when you think about doing it, it's like, oh, no, that's just a pipe dream sort of thing anyway. Well, this is the, so. this is the impression we're all given in this system is that, you know, if, if, mm-hmm. if you want to make ends meet, if you want to have a ro- you know, roof over your head, then you've you got to go along to get along. And it is true to some degree. Mm-hmm. But this is the situation oh, yeah. that he was yeah. that he was pushed in. It was was wanting to break away, and then what happens? They call him up. They wave some money in his face. He's got oh, you know, my career is about to take you know really really take off now. Um, and, and and the clever thing about that was the reason they call him back is because of all the bad things he did with the technology and fantasizing over Sophie and creating a virtual version of her to have a virtual affair. Yeah. Um, you know all all of his guilty indulgences. Yeah, was, like, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. That's that. great. That's yeah, what, yeah, that's what that's what works for the marketing aspect. So all the worst aspects of him yeah. are the best aspects to sell this thing. Well, absolutely. And, and then it, it, even a, another thing, there's the creative guy that had all sorts of interesting, great ideas, and he, he was a real um, intelligent guy. All that stuff was crap; they couldn't use it. You know, all, all the real ideas that are useful and would help people uh, they're no good but but all the guilty the self-indulgence all, all the self-destruction yeah that's great people buy that up we well they will that. and they would um yeah. and this is yeah. what would happen and if they were if they were gonna i mean it's the same way that the the internet was kind of covertly marketed when it first came out was was the instant access to pornography and i'm sure that if yeah. something like this these you know augmenter or google glasses or whatever it is really does hit the shelves then the big thing will be what you can do with it in terms of like sexuality and i'm, I'm sure that would mm-hmm. be mm-hmm. the main thing that most people are interested in when they go and buy something like this you know yeah, by some... default, there's no way around yeah <laughs> so very <laughs> you know goes very well observed and you know, yeah. true, true to you know, true to form. Or, yeah, yeah. I, I really think this movie was genius in so many different ways. All the symbolism they used and, and the, the references to cult, occult ideas were really well done. And this this was an independent, low budget film, it's still tied to Amazon. That's a whole separate thing. That's not the filmmaker's fault. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but this is this is such a uh, they really did a good job with this. Yeah, this is one of the better films we've reviewed, in my opinion. I think so. I think so. And the, the more we've talked about it, and the more I've read about it, the higher my opinion is of it. Because I realize that the observations I've made and the observations you've made were not. Um, just their own interpretation, but they, they tied very much into what the director himself was intending in this film. So, nice. yeah, big, big nice. props to, um, to um, what's his face? Benjamin Dickinson. Yep. Yes, yes, well done. Yep. Well done, sir. 
<laughs> well, um, I guess we've got to leave it at that for now. Um, but people who are interested in listening to the show, if you're not already aware, you can get us on iTunes, you can get us on Google Play, you can get us on Stitcher Radio, yeah. and you can check we're out also our also on TuneIn. Oh, now. yeah. TuneIn. TuneIn. Yeah, we're on that now. Yeah. Okay. Um, we will have a Twitter feed very shortly. And, of course, the website is tmpodcast.com. Mm -hmm. Great talking to you, Adam. Yeah, great to talking to you, Adam, and thanks, everybody, for listening. Ta-ta. Today's episode of Themes and Memes was recorded on the 30th of May, 2016.